Hey, what's up everybody? Chris here. So today we're going to talk about Laura. We're going to do this in two videos. This first video is going to be uh, entirely focused on the paper, what we're actually trying to do with Laura, why it works, why we think it's going to work. The second video will be a practical implementation video. Uh, so that'll be coming out tomorrow and it will just be about how do we implement this in Python, right? How do we run this in a notebook and get it to work? Uh, but let's just hop right into the theory. In order to understand Laura, we first have to understand what fine tuning is. Um, fine tuning is the process by which we pass data through our pre-trained network and then we update the weights based on, you know, the weight updates that we get from backpropagation. So it's just like training, right? Uh, but we're doing it with these pre-trained models. So very straightforward. A lot of you might already understand this, but let's just walk through this process. So the first thing we do is we do a forward pass. We pass data through. Then we calculate delta weights or the weight updates with backpropagation. And then we combine our updated weights with our base weights to get some new weights. And then we do that again. And then that's and then we keep doing this until we're happy, right? So that's basically fine tuning. It's glazing over some of the details, but it is the idea, right? Now we can represent that a little bit differently. So we can represent that as having our frozen pre-trained weights, our frozen inputs and embedding layers, pass data through, and then we're constantly updating this here right, this delta W or the weight updates uh, every time we go through this process. But instead of recombining them, we're just repeatedly updating these. Now they still get added together, recombined at this step. So the effect of us changing the uh, weight updates is felt, but we're keeping track of it separately. Now that's important because that's part of what Laura relies on. That's something that we're going to take advantage of, essentially, right? That's how it's done. So what is Laura? Well, Laura means low rank adaptation. That's not necessarily satisfying, but we we need to understand a few more things before we get into exactly what Laura is doing. So the first thing I want to talk about is this idea of a weight matrix and this idea of something called matrix decomposition. So loosely speaking, a matrix is this A by B structure, right? Uh, let's just pretend both are 100. So we have this A by B structure, 100 by 100 structure that has uh, you know total of 10,000 things it's caring about. And that's the weight matrix, right? Now, one of the key insights that's made by this paper is that Pre-trained models have very low intrinsic dimension. So what essentially what that means is that they can be described as accurately or almost as accurately using way fewer dimensions than they have. So instead of needing, say, a full 100 dimensions, maybe we could get away with having, you know, 90 dimensions. Uh, so that's all That's all really it's saying. You can, there's a lot of redundancy. There's a lot of extras, a lot of, a lot of just stuff hanging out that we can kind of get rid of right? So the key insight that the Laura paper makes is it goes one step further. They hypothesize that the weight also have a low intrinsic rank during adaptation. So what does that mean, right? Well, if we go back to our diagram, this matrix has dimensions of A by B, but the rank of a matrix isn't equal necessarily to its dimensions. It's equal to the number of linearly independent rows or columns. So this matrix might be 100 by 100, and it might have rank, you know, 70 or 4, you know? So, but what that is saying is that you don't need all of those dimensions to accurately describe everything that's going on. So we use this process called matrix decomposition to represent this very large matrix as a potentially smaller combination of matrices. In this case, they are factors, right? So uh, we, we want the product of this to be this, essentially. The key insight here is that these matrices, WA and WB, can be much smaller than the original matrix, right? but be the same thing, represent the same thing. So in that case, you know, we have this 
A by R matrix and this R by B matrix. And that gives us this, you know, these smaller matrices that we can use to represent that delta W. And that's exactly what the Laura paper says, right? You have this initial weight matrix of D by K, and then you would add the, uh, you know, the delta W. In this case, delta W would be your full weight update matrix. But instead, we can represent delta W by B and A, so the product of B and A, uh, where B is uh, a some D by R matrix, A is some R by K matrix, and then R is less than the dimensions of the original matrix, which is D by K, right? So, uh, and again, the reason we can do that is that we're making this hypothesis that the actual rank of the matrix is lower than what we think it is, right? So they have an intrinsically low rank, which means that we don't need as much stuff to represent them. And so we use R as a hyperparameter to indicate what rank we want these decomposed matrices to be. And you might be thinking to yourself, hey, hang on a second, Chris, does this really matter? Like we're, we're trying to represent the original thing so how, how is that possibly like a compute save, right? Well, think of it this way. Again, if both A and B are 100, and we have an, uh, a 100 by 100 matrix, which is 10,000 elements, right? What if instead we had a 100 by 5 matrix, and then we had a 5 by 100 matrix, right? So that's going to be 500 and 500, which is 1,000, which is much less than 10,000. Right, ten times less, even, um, and that's the idea of Laura. We're saying we don't need as much information to represent everything accurately and wonderfully, so we can just decompose this into two smaller matrices, and then we can deal with it later. And that's exactly what they do. So, with that in mind, we have the this idea, right? So, whereas in our original diagram we had this weight update matrix be its own entity, we instead are representing it by these decomposed matrices uh, WA and WB, which have this rank of R uh, that we get to select. That's a hyperparameter again. Now, it doesn't literally mean they have rank R, but we are, we're saying that you can only have up to rank R. So one of the just general truths about matrices is that they can't have a rank that exceeds their smallest dimension, right? So in a five by 100 matrix, the maximum rank is five. And similarly, in a 100 by five matrix, the maximum rank is going to be five. So we're artificially limiting the maximum rank here. But we're saying that it doesn't need to be up to 100. So rank doesn't need to be as high as 100. But what we're saying is that the rank is not as high as 100. It's probably much lower, right? So we can get away with uh, explaining or expressing the information as richly using a much smaller matrix. Uh, and so that's how this process goes. Now, you will notice that there is some inefficiency here, right? We do have to uh, do this combination after we, we flow data through, which is going to be inefficient. At inference time, we can just merge these updates into the pre-trained weights, which means that there's actually potentially zero inference latency, which is incredible. Um, there's another really important fact that we're, we can exploit about this that we'll get into in a second. But I just want to, for the most part, get everybody on the same page that what this WA and WB represent are, they mean or they provide the same information as that full delta W, uh, but we're seeing it expressed in these decomposed matrices. So that's the big insight of Laura. Again, you know, we can see that even though technically this is, you know, has the potential to have a little bit of additional inference, uh, we can merge the weights so that there's not. Great. That's great. Um, there's also a little bit of bonus here that we're going to talk about in a second. So how does this apply to fine-tuning our large language models? Well, they're all transformer-based, and the LoRa team basically, because you could do this to any weight matrix, 
right? So, I mean, technically, you could do this to anything that has a weight matrix. You could say, well, I'm just going to represent it by this smaller, uh, you know, these these decomposed matrices, and we're going to save ourselves compute. And for a lot of practices, that actually seems to be pretty true, right? That other paper makes the uh, makes the, the statement that a lot of these pre-trained models are, you know, have intrinsically lower dimensions. And so it's it perhaps likely that the weights would have intrinsically low rank, but um, you know the, this paper is focused on this specific application, uh, and they're only replacing the attention weights, so they're not touching any of the rest of the architecture of the transformer, just the attention weights. In fact, uh, in the paper, they mostly focus on, I believe, Q and V, um, which is the query and then the value. Because we, from, uh, you know, attention is all you need, you know, there's the query key value, um, you know, attention mechanism. There's some simplifications here, and they they do some things to, uh, you know, they, they, they back up their, their decisions rather well in the paper. I don't want to get too much into that. I would recommend, please, reading the paper. It's absolutely fantastic, uh, but uh, we don't need to get that deep here. We just want to understand kind of high level how this is working, why it's working, right? So why is it so good? So we get it. You know, these, these weight matrices have intrinsically low rank, so we can decompose the weight matrix into these very small matrices, and we can maintain most of the information, and that's happy. So what does that get us, though? Well, when we use those small matrices, we don't need to care about the weight matrices of the entire model anymore. Right, So we get to instead just ignore them. Everything else is frozen. We don't need anything else, right? So we don't need the optimizer states for the parameters that are frozen. We just need these small, tiny little injections that we've made, which is that those, those matrix pairs. Absolutely fantastic, right? So uh, they talk about a lot of numbers here, you know, roughly 10,000 times reduction uh, in checkpoint size. They talk about, uh, you know, going from 1.2 terabytes to 350 gigabytes. Uh, they talk about, you know, 25% speed up during training. Th there's lots of different awesome optimizations here that kind of like come along with the, the deal of if you have 96 transformer modules, right? And you, instead of needing their full weight matrices or matrices, you only need these smaller versions. It adds up to a ton of memory saved, which means we can compute faster because we're computing on smaller matrices. Anyway, it's fantastic. Okay. So what, what weight matrices in the transformer block should we apply LoRa to? Uh, they gave themselves this limit. They were saying, Hey, you know, we only have a parameter budget of 18 million parameters, which by the way is insane. That's so few parameters. Right. Um, and then, you know, okay. So if we use one, uh, if we adapt one type of attention weights, then we can use a rank of eight. If we, uh, use two, uh, if we adapt two of the attention weights, we can use R4. And then if we do all of them, we can do two, right? So that's the idea. Uh, and they did apply this to all 96 layers of the, of the model, right? So every layer or block is built up of that same structure. And so they're applying it to every part of it, which is, which is key. Um, and basically they, they went with, uh, d uh, Q and V. So query and value results are going to determine what's the best for you to do here, uh, what you have access to through the model API. Uh, but essentially what this is saying is that with very few parameters and very low artificial rank, right? So very low maximum rank, let's say this is, it's insane how good this is, right? So let's look at some more results to see just how insane. This section is just telling us that, you know, you don't need a very high R. The intrinsic rank of the weight matrix is potentially super low. But again, this comes down to hyperparameter optimization and kind of, you know, what is best for your application. The kind of like fun part of this is that when you have, when you're doing the LoRa process on both Q and V, so WQ and WV, um, you know, you, you, you actually can get away with one, which is kind of insane. Like an R of one, 
uh, which which does kind of suggest that you know Delta W has very low intrinsic rank. Uh, but anyway, we you know uh, moving on from that, let's look at some more results. These are kind of my favorite results, you know, where we find that Laura performs better than or at least as good as prefix-based ap approaches given the same number of parameters. Um, I really think this is cool because, again, you know, there is there's downside to a lot of these other like kind of adaptery methods or we're, we're adding something to the the model, but with Laura, we're just injecting these these matrices right that that's like the addition we're making and we don't even need to keep that addition we can just straight get rid of it now we don't need to now one of the coolest things that i haven't touched on yet is that because all we're injecting is this right and we're training this and this is like the thing that we train um and we we can just combine that with the pre-trained weights Imagine a situation where you have one base model that you've trained in like six different downstream tasks using Laura. All you have to do to swap between those tasks is replace this, right? You could do that even at inference time. You, you know what I mean? You, you, could, you could have customers choose which version they want at inference time. So you don't have to have like all of the models all running at the same time. You could have them swap based on what task they need done, which is huge. I think that's the biggest advantage to Laura right now. It is certainly much better than the other solutions when it comes to this because it doesn't impose a significant inference penalty to do this, right? Uh, we have the ability to toggle and pick and choose from our toolbox. Instead of having this model zoo all pre-trained or all fine-tuned to do different things, we have this one great model that has been Laura fine-tuned and we can put whatever we need to accomplish the task into that slot. That to me is one of the biggest advantages of Laura. And I think as well to, to a lot of other people, I'm not claiming that I'm like the only guy who's hyped about this to be clear. Um, but I am hyped about it. And I think it's one of the coolest applications of Laura is this idea that we can swap. And that is Laura at a high level right? But it is. And that's all it's doing, right? Again, to summarize, the key insight here is that because these models have low intrinsic dimension, we can make the inference that they have their uh, weight matrices have intrinsically low rank, so it can be represented very cleanly by lower rank matrices. So we can decompose those that weight uh, update matrix into these smaller uh, matrices. And then we can fine tune those and just those, literally just those massive memory savings, massive uh, speed increase when it comes to how long does it take to train this thing, right? Laura is a very impressive piece of technology because it gives us almost everything we want. You know, fine tuning is a very powerful tool extremely powerful tool if you can fine tune and find almost as much success but it costs you ten thousand fewer dollars or whatever it happens to be you know which is not absurd uh that's just a win that's a huge win right when you have the ability to have all of these different tasks that you can kind of pick and pick and choose and plug and play Again, this can even be at inference time. Uh, you're really setting yourself up for success, right? It's going to save you money. It's going to save your customers uh, inference. It's going to just be better all around. And so that's Laura. So I hope that this has been useful to you. If you did find it useful, please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, tomorrow, again, we're going to be talking about the actual implementation of this uh, in, in Python um, to do a few different uh, examples, including kind of seeing this uh, live inference swap that uh, I'm talking about. So thank you so much all for your time and I hope you have a great day.